This person that I'm about to talk about has been long overdue for a bed bucket entry, but it's just that it's kind of hard to catch which one to go on because this dude, literally all he does on his Twitter account every single day is buck his eyes and Sambo dances all up and down his own timeline. And you would think he'd have better things to do considering he is a poly trickshot out of Georgia. But then again, you <laughs> What do you expect? When I say pile of attrition, what do you expect? I expect really nothing. Not much of anything. Especially with this dude right here. So in case you don't know who this is, this is Barrington Martin II. And he had posted up a tweet on his Twitter account where he was basically saying that there were kind slaveholders. I feel like I've heard someone else say that before, but he actually said that they were kind slaveholders. And of course, you know, the usual suspects were sitting there agreeing with them. But he went so far with it that people on Twitter literally gave them their, gave him their own version of a Coon Award. Like literally, they actually gave him a digital Coon Award. And to that, I say, thank you. He's very well deserving of it. Controversial talking head Barrington Martin II has found himself in a social media dust up after posting on Twitter comments about quote unquote good slave masters. He qu he queried out loud why no one ever talks about the planters and slavers who treated their enslaved Africans with kindness and worried about the physical and mental health of their unpaid laborers forced to work on their properties or risks being sold to another person. On the morning of Sunday, February 26th, Martin tweeted, We hear about all the horrors of slavery, automatically assuming that all slave owners were hateful, vengeful, and sought to inflict their slaves with fear. But it's funny we never hear about those slave owners who led with kindness and wanted their slaves to be in the best shape, mentally as well as physically. Why do you think that is? First off, anyone who owns someone and they call them a slave is not a kind person. We, you literally are owning a person and calling them property. That alone is not a kind person. Even if you was to take away all the other atrocities that came with it, the fact that you're owning somebody and calling them a slave and treating them like their property rather than a human being, that is not a kind person. I bet you he wouldn't call. Well, you know what? The fact that he even said this, he might actually, if he, he probably would gladly run back into bondage knowing him. He would probably be the snitch too. The tweet was inspired by some reading Martin, a black Georgia poly trickshot and educator, had been doing. He ran in the 2020 special election in Georgia's 5th District to fill John Lewis's seat in the House of Representat Representatives, but fell short. He shared with his more than 64,100 followers on social media a 20th century slavery narrative from a person born into enslavement in 1851 named Charles Coles. In the narrative, Coles says he was reared on a large farm by a man by the name of Silas Dorsey, a fine Christian gentleman and a member of the Catholic Church. According to the narrative dated November 15th, 1937, the person who was a young teen was an early teen when emancipated, said, Dor said Mr. Dorsey was a man of excellent reputation and character, was loved by all who knew him, black and white, especially his slaves. He, has, he was never known to be harsh or cruel to any of his slaves, of which he had more than 75. <laughs> Y'all, we cannot make this up. This dude actually searched far and wide until he found one that he could back up his narrative and that didn't and that wasn't even a true backup either in cole's account enslaved people were only called to work 11 hour days 7 a.m to 6 p.m and you know what's crazy that's even that's more than the actual work day of eight hours at least now you get paid back then they weren't getting paid a thing and had holidays off while the man, then about 85, says he doesn't remember if they worked on Saturday, he also remembered no one ever talked about runaways. Basically trying to imply that no, why would anyone want to leave? We, they love it there. No, they probably knew the risk of running away and getting caught. That's probably why they did not leave. 
According to Coles, Dorsey, the good master, also afforded his servants good heavy clothes and shoes in the winter and fine clothes in the summer. He also said in this account, there were no jails, nor was any whipping done on the Dorsey farm. Well, let's hypothetically say that there wasn't any whipping done on the Dorsey farm. What about all the other slave owners and slave masters that did do it and did worse? Remember, slavery was a 400 plus year atrocity. It wasn't just lasting a day. Twitter erupted with Martin's post calling him a coon and submitting thoughts of how poorly developed his thoughts are pertaining to the subject. One Twitter user named Chad Boogie said, this may be the most coonified statement I've ever read on the app. You win the trophy, Barrington. Former president and director counsel of the LDF NAACP Legal Defense Fund, Sherilyn Ifill, tweeted, it's like some portal of insanity opened up this weekend. Here is a fact about the kindest, most caring, generous, thought, generous, thoughtful, and lenient of slave owners. They were slave owners, Andy Reeser wrote. He also tweeted he was always thought, taught as a child in Virginia schools that enslaved people were happy and their masters were benevolent. So let me get this straight. Of the 3.2 million slaves that were owned, you found what maybe 200 who were treated like human beings, and that justifies your post to question. That's exactly what I said. He found just a bare, a small drop in the bucket compared to the massive amounts of other people who went through way worse to try to back up his claim. That's like saying, well, the British ended slavery. They started the fire and then acted like firemen. The more people challenged Martin, the more he defended his position and posted additional resources to justify his point. In one exchange, a person named Franklin Leonard asked him, did you read the threads you posted? Adding, they still include enslaved people talking about being whipped when the situation was appropriate. Them and their parents being bought and sold, being owned by other people. They're not understanding what freedom even was. Is that not horror? Martin responded, they accepted it. Are you not curious as to why they did accept this as human beings? Well, here's the thing. They weren't even seen as human beings. He must not know about the three-fifths compromise. And that was before the three-fifths compromise was even a thing. If we're talking about going way back to the or to the beginning, the, that's horror to you in present-day terms. They spoke about being slaves matter-of-factly, and some even had positive things to say about it. Some people believe Martin's questions was valid and co-signed his post, blasting those who missed the points. And I can just about guess which ones they were. But let's continue. It looks like you ruffled a lot of feathers by simply acknowledging that we don't hear other sides of the story. Tammy Abba Khalil, whose bio says she is Canadian and had an uncle who served as the 17th prime minister of New Zealand. First off, Heffa. You all the way in in Canada, you are descendants of people from New Zealand. You have no dog in this fight at all. <laughs> like nowhere near it. People take what they feel and believe it to be the holy truth. It's astounding the amount of individuals who are so confined to one narrative. That's because that's what they want. Again, this dude is being used as a shield and he has no problem being used as one either in order to push a narrative forward that they want to so bad. Martin says while he has received death threats and is being harassed over the tweet, he also feels like his point about kind masters is appropriate because he is placing them in the context of the antebellum South. His tweet reads, it was common practice, LOL. You guys failed to understand this. You're imposing a modern day moral compass on a something that was so common. It was a moral. What gets me is that you're all so virtuous about it when it's easy to be against slavery today. So easy. Listen, I don't know where his lineage is, but this name Barrington. Barrington, I'm not entirely sure, but I, can someone confirm or deny if this dude is non FBA or not? Because this is spoken like a true tether right here. But like I said, what y'all just got is a taste of what you'll see commonly on his timeline every day on Twitter. This guy doesn't really talk about anything political based unless he can drag black people into it and find a way or some kind of negative connotation in order to use.
So he lost his position. He still calls himself a politician. I don't know how. And this is all he does. It reminds me of Fakem. He keeps calling himself or his audience keeps calling him Officer Tatum, even though he hasn't been a cop for so many years now. Just like when it came to David Clark, I stopped calling him sheriff when he was no longer the sheriff. But he and his constituents kept calling him that because they're in love with labels and titles. And I wouldn't be surprised if this dude fell into the same category. I do have one question I would ask of Barrington Martin II. Would he say that there were kind Nazis during the Holocaust? Would he tell that to the J community? Would he say that? And if he did, I wonder how far he would get with that narrative. He would be out of here. And it wouldn't even take long to clear him about the table because he really doesn't have a platform like that. You know, I'm just curious. Everyone has all this smoke for our ancestry and saying what they were and what they weren't and how we should feel about it. But I wonder if he had something to say similarly about them, about them folks and the atrocities that they went through with the Holocaust. I'm just curious.